do, 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 do. Let's start with fabrics. I'm going to start with the very broad and go to more narrow. When I was 19 and I had moved from North Carolina out to Arizona to dance professionally in ballroom dancing, I was considered heavy at the time and I was about the size I am now. <laughs> and I lived off tuna and chicken and I ran every night after working 10 hours and rehearsing for two and a half hours because I had to lose weight. I was told I was heavy. That right there was bad enough. But I did, I lost a bunch of weight and by ballroom standards looked good. Even though my mother was horrified <laughs> when she saw me, she nearly panicked because I was very thin. And so anyway, it was my first US championships and I had gone to all this trouble to lose weight and look very ballroom like. And I made a white dress that was pleated all over and it had this cool black fan, this cool black accent. It was actually a really awesome dress. Not good for someone who just went to a lot of trouble to lose weight. So I go out and we dance the first round. I was going to wear this dress for the first three rounds. And then for the fourth round, change into, I think it was, I don't remember what color dress, a different dress, because that's what you did. When you were in the top six, you had to change dresses. And so after the first round, we come off the floor and one of the judges who was, I can't remember if they were judging or not, but they, he came up to me and he says, why are you wearing white? And why are you wearing all this stuff on you? He says, it makes you look fat and you just lost a bunch of weight. And I was like, oh, one, I almost burst into tears. And two, I didn't know. I didn't know. Not once for a second did I think white would make me look heavier. And two, having all this pleating, it was called Fortuny pleating. And it was kind of, whoa, I'm trying to relate that to something that you can relate to today. It was kind of like accordion pleating or starburst pleating that you use for skirts sometimes. And it was the whole thing. The whole kit and caboodle was white and pleated. And I probably looked like I had just put back on all the weight. I threw the dress away when I got home, even though I had spent hours. I mean, after rehearsing, I mean, literally I would work until almost time to, the sun would come up trying to finish this dress. And I just threw it away because I didn't know. So I'm telling you ladies, <laughs> if you wear light colors, and you wish to look thinner, avoid those light colors. So let me rephrase that. If you wish to look thinner, wear medium tone to darker colors. If you are thin and you wish to look larger on the floor, then you can wear the medium to lighter colors or you can wear shiny fabrics. So again, if you wish to wear, if you wish to look thinner, avoid shiny fabrics because it will reflect light and make you look heavier. What counts as a shiny fabric? Metallic foil counts as a shiny fabric. Um, sequins, hologram dods, and these, if you do a fabric search, uh, would you like for me to pull up pictures of this on the internet of these types of fabrics? Would that be helpful? for folks overseas where you may call it a different name. Anyone? Bueller? <laughs> Conversely, if you have a matte colored fabric, matte means there's no, rind, no shine on it, you can actually, anybody can wear that. Any shape or size can usually wear matte fabrics because they, um, they're very neutral. They look good on pretty much anybody. Now this dress is, I think a really awesome dress in a lot of ways. This is velvet. Now pretty much everybody can wear velvet. They do come in different thicknesses. So you want to, if you are a heavy set lady, such as Julie, she's very much a plus size woman, then you want to try to choose a lightweight velvet. Sometimes they're really thick and I will, um, usually try to get the lighter weight fabric because it's cooler 
and because it doesn't add so much thickness. So velvet actually has um, little hairs on it. And the little hairs on your lightweight velvet may only be that big, but the hairs on the big, on the thicker velvet could be that. And if you are trying to look slimmer, they're not really this big, but if I show them as small as they are, you wouldn't be able to see it. But proportionately, they're pretty good size. And you can actually feel it when you press on the fabric, you can feel the texture. So as you are looking for fabrics, if you are making your own dress or you're buying fabrics to take to your dressmaker, get samples from several stores and pick one that feels appropriate for your body size. Smaller people, you may want the thicker velvet. Heavier, weight, heavier people, you may want the lightweight velvet. Okay, in this case, this was from Chris Ann in England and it had glitter on it, which even though this is a shiny fabric was perfectly fine. And on the arm, this is another Chris Ann fabric. You can tell that this is a very shiny fabric, but I have it, oops, I'm not on, sorry, I'm not on share screen, but I have it as an accent. And because it's an accent on her arm, and on the underskirts and these little flames, it's perfectly fine. So if you really love shiny fabrics, and a lot of people do, because bling is cool, right? Then use it judiciously. Use it to accentuate um, body parts that you want them to look at. Okay, so use your shiny fabrics or use your big rhinestone focal point to draw attention away from some other body parts. In Julie's case, um, she's, she's very round and many plus size women are round in uh, like in the hip areas and the belly areas, but she was pretty symmetrical. She just really likes asymmetrical dresses. So almost all of hers were asymmetrical. I think it actually suits her personality and she was a beautiful performer. So that is a way that you can have your cake and eat it too by combining your fabrics. Teresa, while you're looking, could you talk about how much stretch fabrics should have? Because oh, the yes, example are very different in, in terms of how much they stretch. Fabrics really are very different in terms of how much they stretch. And it is helpful for you to get samples from people. So because even if you order Lycra or mesh from different companies, the amount of stretch in those fabrics is going to be different every time. It's really frustrating. <laughs> so sometimes color effects. So I like in the United States, I like to order from Band Shop. They have really good quality fabrics. It is less expensive than me ordering from Chris Ann. They typically have good customer service and I like to support the American economy whenever I can because I believe we should all support the economies within our own countries whenever possible. But that's totally your call. So I like Band Shop. But whenever I order um, fabrics from Band Shop, every, they're usually pretty consistent. Say like all the ones that are blues and greens have the same amount of stretch. But if I go to something that has red or neon pink or neon yellow, suddenly the stretch quality changes. And I think a lot of that has to do with the color dye. So as you are um, trying to decide on your fabrics, get samples from other places if you can, because band shop fabric will change within its own inventory as far as the stretch goes. And this is especially true for mesh and then if you go get it from Spandex House in New York or Chris Ann in England, all of those Lycras and all of those meshes will have different stretch. So what does that mean for you? That means that if you are making your own dress, you need to know how to fit. You need to know how to take that dress in. You need to know what problems to look for because every dress takes on its own life because every fabric is different. Um, what is the spelling of that shop name? Um, B A, yep, um, Hannah's got it. Uh, what I'll do is I will start a link and just everybody from around the world post your favorite fabric stores. You know, give the web link and say what country it is. And if they have a favorite fabric that you like, just type in Great Lycra 
or they have bra cups or you know whatever your favorite whatever they have that works for dance and skate costumes and then that way we can all help each other around the world there and I'll, I'll start that link after this call all right so if we go back to share screen here and I am looking at this dress so in Maria what works with her you'll notice that between the two of us there is not a bit of shine here because generally when you want to look taller you usually do not want to um, interject shine because the shine will often compete with other design elements and in her case if she looks tinier width wise all of this white makes her look taller visually but if she was shiny here it would interfere with the white being the focal points that make her look taller does that make sense so as fabrics as far as fabrics on this dress go she's got a matte stretch crepe which is an overdress for the leotard underneath the lace here is beautifully placed and she has a very steep skirt with the white fringe now in this video i told her you know i would not ever have imagined having white fringe because the contrast to me seems like it would not that is not the first thing that would come to my mind and she says yeah well when i originally got the dress from the dressmaker it had black fringe and she didn't like it she wanted to change it to white freaking genius <laughs> it's highly effective because she looks so much taller when compared to her dance teacher who was like way up there okay so again fringe is matte meaning it doesn't have any shine though sometimes now you can get metallic fringe which can be really fun the lace laces can be as sparkly as you want and all of these little rhinestones around here are super sparkly so you can put rhinestones on a matte fabric and it has a very different appearance than using an actual shiny fabric and I'm not completely sure why that is but my theory is that whenever you put rhinestones on fabric there is always a little bit of the fabric that shows through the stones and so you have this contrast between shiny and fabric so it creates depth whereas if you just have sequin fabrics you just have a bunch of shine you don't and it tends to look flat does that make sense okay water hang on i'm out of water <laughs> really whatever we talk about today will be the tip of the iceberg i mean it really will there's just so yeah there's so much information with fabrics we covered the basic do's and don'ts of shine versus matte that is crucial we um i also covered the bit about thicknesses about velvet yeah i'm gonna um, recommend you all watch this okay this was a sewing school member that i met in arizona she did not want to be on screen and so i modeled her dresses <laughs> So in this blog, you want, yeah, no, I can't reduce. Hit the wrong button. <laughs> uh, here we go. I talk about the differences in how to cut your velvet, which way the nap goes. So rather than repeat myself, I'm just gonna say, check out this blog. And then also, I believe this is the one where I have a picture of um, crushed velvet. So crushed velvet pretty much counts as a shiny fabric in my book because for people who want to look thinner, crushed velvet is a big no-no. For people who want to uh, look larger, if you're really trim, you want to look larger, crushed velvet is perfectly fine. Um, this particular dress, so long as we're speaking about velvet, okay, so here's a really um, awesome way to create texture depth and shine while still having a really sleek slimming dress okay so here's obviously a mature performer and having a shiny skirt is really fun because it draws attention down towards her hips and down towards the movement but yet she still has velvet all on the top to be very slimming 
So that is one way to have shine and matte. And then all, the, all these little dots are rhinestones. Oh, I took me to a different blog. All right, well, I didn't want it to do that because I don't have any pictures. I just wanted to see the picture. <sighs> all right, so then I'll zoom in. There we go. So that, that's another option for that, for your fabrics. <sighs> okay, all right, deal. I'm trying to, let me check my notes here. Um, that's the, that's the basic do's and don'ts for fabric with regards to colors and textures and how to use shiny fabrics as accents to draw attention away from an area that you don't want them to look at, to look at and to draw your attention to an area that is the other place. <laughs> okay, any questions? On, um, Sigrid says, should I make my tall, thin dance partner wear cross velvet? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we could totally do the whole disco thing, right? Because then they can wear it. <laughs> you might not have a dance partner after that. <laughs> so, if you, so if you actually like them, maybe not. 